I wanted to let's address right this issue. All right, taking a look here, we've had this going on quite a lot of talk about it on social media. The model Halima Aden, right now, she has quit as you can see being a model the runway that's what that's what it's called runway model because she was forced to compromise her faith you can see her here before the kind of uh, conversion to a slightly less modest hijab i mean to me it was still you know, it was still hijab anyway, but she feels, <laughs> I will come to that in a moment, she feels that this hijab had compromised her iman, so she quit the industry and, you know, it was just, it broke the internet for the Muslim da'wah scene. Now, what are my thoughts on this? Now, first of all, I think, look, I wish her luck in whatever field she's in or gone into. You know, I I don't, I don't, don't really know much about her before, don't really still know too much about her now. But sure, I mean, if she says, look, Islam to me in some way has become more meaningful because of this, then, you know, more power to you and good luck. But, as far as this thing about quitting industries, now that's a person's personal choice, but I have said this before. I've got a few videos on um, when certain Bollywood actresses, uh, there was that Zyra. Uh, there was also when I spoke about some Pakistani celebrities uh, who had quit the, the showbiz industry to to come to Islam and dedicate themselves to Islam. Now, especially that, uh, especially Zaira Wasim. I've got a video on that. It's on YouTube where she, because she presents a detailed note. She gives a letter which she puts on Instagram, Facebook, all these different social media sites, explaining in detail how the industry had made her be a part of something very haram and so on. And she's now found peace with God. Now, I have explained that, look, people, one must remember that the world, work, industry, um, it always will have, there will always be elements of, um, of this, of, I, I, I'm trying, of frustration, you understand, um, of, this kind of burdensome, maybe evil politics or dynamics. Let me replace it with that word. Evil, if I want to say evil in that sense, but this kind of dark, burdensome, weighty, evil dynamics exist, I would say, in all industries. But they are like, it's like a spectrum. It exists more in some industries than others. So it exists everywhere. So, you know, this thing of feeling like you have, your, <coughs> your life is compromised or aspects of your life are being compromised or, you know, you're feeling uncomfortable or feeling, this is everywhere. It's just being a part of the world. But in some places, it's more than others. So. When a person works, like let's say Halima was a taxi driver, let's say, I mean, it'd be an interesting spin on taxi drivers, but why not? Let's say, you know, gender equality, let's say Halima was a taxi driver. So she would have seen this. She might have been thinking, oh my God, I take people to such and such. I take people to clubs. I take people to pubs. I take them to do all, you know, I pick someone up who's cheating on his partner. I pick someone up who's going to, who's just stolen something. I pick someone. Up. You see now this, even though they haven't participated, but they might feel that, look, I'm kind of helping them. 
<laughs> I'm the getaway driver. <laughs> so, but it, it, I'm just giving an example. Now, you could <clears throat> work in a college or a school, and this it's a different kind of thing. You know, there's a politics. Um, I remember many years ago when I worked in schools. The truth is the system is fake. Now, there isn't, okay, in schools, you're not, there's a different kind of thing going on. It's not, you know, you're not doing those kind of things like people are stealing and stuff like this, but there's a fake facade, a system which is inauthentic. It's insincere. You know, you, it's just, oh, kids are now at this grade. Now we've got them at this grade. Now, we, you know, a huge part of all of this is a lie. You know, it's not really, I mean, in some cases, I understand these things are real. But, you know, when you're a part of that system, if you can see through it, a lot of these things are just lies that people just generate to show something, to achieve something, to gain more kind of credit and rating amongst a certain hierarchy, to um, to create an image. The lies they tell each other, you know, I just do this for, you know, every child you know, every child matters and that whole thing. And if one child, just one child can, and they're lying, they're lying right out of their teeth. They will be backstabbing this person, cutting that person, uh, you know, removing this person from opportunities, providing opportunities to people who are doing them favors on the side, corruption to the core, but just a different kind of corruption. And that's a bloody school. <laughs> you know, the school I worked in, there they would, they would be money deals going on or providing certain things, getting their own people in, making them get this money, you know, not liking certain teachers, making their life hell on purpose. Uh, they don't like somebody else, so they consistently fail that person just to get at them. And these kind of vendettas, and that's... A, perceptibly a benign atmosphere. It's a school, for God's sake. It's not a casino. But so now you move to a different, you know, you can move to a more corporate industry. Things are going to be more intense. There's going to be a lot more, you know, being, you know, other things going on. Maybe people are sleeping with someone to get more of an advantage. You know, they want that position. <laughs> position. <laughs> they want that particular post. Huh? Post. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what word to use here. So they want some kind of a, so people are doing all kinds of things. Maybe this person is, you know, you're working in some corporate offices and this person is sleeping around with all these members of staff and that person is doing this and this person is doing that and that person is sleeping with the boss and that person. And this, what I'm trying to say is in the world, this exists everywhere, just more in some industries than others. So it's like a, a continuum, a spectrum. So obviously, things like the more glamorous an industry is, usually the more darker it is. That's just you know, the, the nature of light. <laughs> you know, like there's a saying that Shama Tale Saya, that this whole, in Urdu, that the, that, you know, the flame, the candle right beneath it is shade. So the darkest place sometimes is closest to it. And so you you will find in these industries, especially to do with beauty, you can just imagine that in industries where there's beautiful women uh, and very powerful rich men, <laughs> you know, that's like, that's just pure <laughs> fuel and flame. There's nothing, you know, in an industry like that, there's going to be exploitation, which is just going to be the name of the game. It's not even going to be exploited. It's just going to be the, the rungs of a ladder. Everybody's going to have to be doing it. <laughs> there you can't even, there's no point calling it. You might as well just call it rituals. <laughs> but yeah, so people, look, so what I would say is that I... If, you know, this uh, model leaving her job or other people and they, they find more peace in their heart, then Alhamdulillah, I think that's who, you know, may everybody find peace in their heart. But what I would also say is that the had on a set, I'm not saying you have to stay in the model industry, modeling industry, but you must remember that, you know, sometimes 
when we're in the middle of a, a hustle and bustle, we being extracted from that into anything that is remotely meditative will always bring serene and bliss. It will always bring this kind of like this serenity. Sorry, it will bring this kind of uh, tranquil feeling. So if somebody was in, imagine you're in a court, imagine there's nothing even really that bad going on, but you're in this, you, I don't know, you're working on Wall Street or you're working in the London Stock Exchange and it's like, oh, it's all mad and you're selling and buy, buy, sell, sell, buy. And then you all of a sudden come out of that and you go to a yoga retreat you're going to naturally feel this sense of calmness. So it's the same thing when a person is in the dunya, like when I say by dunya, I mean like work, 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 mad mayhem, routines, chaos, doing this, doing that. And then you come out and now you're like, let me read the Quran. Now, naturally, you're going to get a sense of tranquility, a sense of peace and calmness. But the the issue here, the challenge is this too is an emotion. And like all emotions, it will subside. So if you just try to sit down and read the Quran for two years in a row, um, <laughs> that try, it's not going to be like that. Okay, you're not going to get that kind of feeling all the way through. It's not going to work like that. Because that's why, you know, the, the Prophet, he said to people, look, I, the, the better mu'min is the one when you khalit on nas who mixes, mingles with people in their world, remains a part of their world, but can still remember Allah. Because becoming a hermit is never the answer. One must remember we are very much part of this dunya. But that's true. We don't need to be in the filthiest part. <laughs> but that said, you will always, the hustle and bustle, even if it's not that, dark it will still always preoccupy you it's good to just have an escapism but the escapism even the spiritual escapism if it becomes a a norm you will need an escapism from that just that's basic human psychology so yeah so but my only issues with what halima i saw some of her posts or i saw people sharing her posts and you know, she was kind of saying on some of, unless I misread them, she was telling people off. Oh my God, you know, I've been in this industry. How come none of you told me off? How come none of you told me to do my hijab properly? How come none of you, you know, you were happy to see my pictures? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you see, this is the problem. You know, no sooner do you decide to give something up for the name of Islam, you decide to become the Khalifa, Khalifa to <laughs> Waqt. Khalifa. The Khalifa, Al Khalifa. Right, this is. <laughs> so, no sooner do you decide to give up <laughs> this haram that you're into you decide to all of a sudden start telling other people off. And I think that is pathetic. You know, that's not the way to go about it. You know, you need to, like, if you've been wrong, you've been wrong. You know, like, why do you tell me off? You people should be embarrassed, ashamed. Of no. First of all, I honestly don't even know what she's on about because in all those pictures, she still has hijab on. But I don't know. Obviously, maybe it wasn't hijab enough. But yeah, so that's my thoughts on it. I think as far as her decision, her life, more power to her. But I think the preaching thing is a bit, you know, it's not, you know, no no need for holier than thou. You know, if I'm correct, I'm sure this is just, you've only just turned holy in the last five minutes. So, <laughs> so you can just apply the brakes. <laughs> and, and we'll see how this works out. Because remember, you've got a whole life ahead of you. This is another issue as well with this day and age with social media. People want to announce amazing <laughs> things which really ought to just be the kind of uh, eulogy, <laughs> which meant to be the kind of like uh, epitaph for their grave, <laughs> gravestone. They want to just announce them by the minute. And the problem is you've got a whole life ahead of you. So you can make all these kind of grand announcements and six months from today, you don't know how you'll be. So I, I would just say, look, 
people ease up with making, you know, grand gestures and grand announcements. Cool. Uh, 